<laughs> hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and right here we are going to be revisiting the X3 Xbox that I ended up uh, modifying for the X3 video I did. In case you do not know, uh, I did a whole video really covering the history, the features, and going through everything with the X3 here. This is the, still the same chip, this is still the same console. But there's one other thing I wanted to do here, and I know some people might be a little bit confused the title where I'm mentioning I want to TSOP flash this already hard modded system, and uh, I'm going to explain that here. But first, uh, let me show you what the issue is that we have going on. So first of all, this console does thankfully work, so what I'm going to do is just turn this on as normal. Alright, so that's just normal boot up. I just press the power button one time. I have the banks one through four activated, I believe. And after a few seconds here, we should get to Unleash X. There we go. So this seems to work fine. This is the mod chip itself running with no issue. Now, if I do, let's see here, eject and power at the same time. No, that's not it. Hold on. It takes a few tries to do this. You have to get the timing just right. There we go. I got it. So if you press eject and power at the same time, you end up getting flash BIOS. So that is off, as you can see right there, the Executor 3. It disappeared, but this uh, is the backup bank that's booting up. Now, if you hold down the power button for one second, you end up disabling the mod chip, which that's what I'm going to do here. And we get an Air 13. Now, Air 13 is related to the hard drive, and I don't remember exactly what it means, but I can tell you the issue here offhand. The issue here is that fat dog over there, Lily, in the corner. No, but seriously, actually, the issue here is that I have a upgraded hard drive in here. I updated this to a 250 gigabyte drive, which is just fine. The problem is this hard drive does not lock. And to boot up into the regular Xbox BIOS, you have to have a locked hard drive. Uh, so the fix would be to lock the drive. Well, this drive is not lockable, unfortunately. So the other fix here would be to put in a lockable drive. Well, this hard drive's been fine, and I really don't want to go through the effort just to be able to do all that stuff. Uh, so the main thing is here, we have multiple ways of booting this system up. I guess at this point, four ways, because I have two BIOS flashed onto the chip. I have stock BIOS, and I have flash BIOS and one of them is not working well for what it is. So what we can do is we can also TSOP flash it, which I normally do to all my systems uh, that are 1.5 or lower. This is a 1.0 model, so it will take a TSOP just fine. So that way it causes two things. One, whenever I disable the mod chip, I will still boot into a modified version of the BIOS, and I'm still able to use the system just fine because I really don't have a need for stock BIOS. If I ever do need to, I could reflash it to stock. But the other thing by doing this is I'm able to still ensure I future-proof the system as well. So mainly if I really doubt this would happen, but if somehow the mod chip goes bust, the system is still usable. If I ever decide to remove this mod chip, for example, because uh, I did get this, you know, from someone who took it out of their Xbox, and if I ever decide to do the same thing for whatever reason, the Xbox is still modified. So I don't have to worry about building a specific hard drive that locks for it. I don't have to worry about recovering the EEPROM. Uh, I don't have to worry about this being a busted system. It will still work just fine. So what I'm gonna do is unhook all this stuff here. And let's start to take this system apart. And I was kind of realizing this as I thought about this project. Unfortunately, I really should have done this while the system was open the first time. Uh, and the nice thing is here too, just to test this, I did keep the original hard drive on this and I don't believe it is locked. I think I did unlock it. So I'm going to lock the hard drive to the system again and make sure it all works. So let's go ahead and start taking this thing apart. All right, and there we go. We have access to the insides of the system now. So that is the uh, Hitachi drive I end up replacing with this and everything else seems to be fine on here so far. So let's go ahead, grab this, start ripping into it further. Mm -hmm. 
So first of all, just to ensure that this is going to work as planned, I'm just going to do a quick hookup here. And if I remember correctly, I don't even think I soft modded this console. I think I just did, you know, as much of a back in the day install as I could have on here for the sake of the video. So what I'm gonna do is hook this back up, make sure it works. And I don't think this drive has been modified at all aside from unlocking it. So just keep it like that for now. Let's go ahead, fire up this Xbox with the original drive and see what's going on. All right, so turning it on normally, this is with the mod chip enabled. And actually, huh, all right. So it looks like we did have that stuff there. Let me go ahead, turn this off. I'm going to boot it with the mod chip disabled. And that gives us an error five. All right, so now let's try this out. I'm gonna reboot this with X3 config live. And where do I need to? I think disk tools, current hard drive setup, enable, there we go. So the hard drive is now locked, easy as that. Gonna turn it off and boot it regularly. So there we go, check that out. We have the original dashboard on here. And on top of that, the drive has been locked and everything. So just quickly going over what I did there. Uh, this is again, the original drive. It looked like I had set this up uh, with some custom dashboards and everything on it. So when you boot up the mod chip, it boots up with a custom dashboard, which was Unleash X. And when you boot it without the mod chip, it just boots up into the stock dashboard. So, so I unlocked this because, you know, just in case I want to access it on any other machines or systems or what have you, that's why I unlocked it. But again, on the stock BIOS and the stock dashboard, well, stock dashboard, not so much, the stock BIOS, you cannot boot up a console with a, with a unlocked hard drive. It has to be locked to that system, uh, which this one wasn't. So that's why when we tried to boot it up normally, it gave us the Air 5. So I think if I remember correctly, I, I think that one was more just straight up files are there, but hard drive isn't locked. I just know they're all related to hard drive errors. And you can look up these codes pretty extensively, thankfully. But shout out to the Xbox community overall for that. But what ended up happening there was we booted up normally. So it was the proper hard drive, but because it wasn't locked on the stock BIOS, we ended up getting an error. So I went in, locked the hard drive, and then it was able to work just fine. Now, that would have been A-OK -okay back in the original Xbox days, like the original Xbox Live days is what I'm trying to say. Like, that would have been optimal, so ideally, you could have your hard drive in there, you make sure it's locked to the system, so you can still play on your mods just fine on your modded BIOS, but then if you ever just want to go onto Xbox Live, you boot up with the mod chip disabled, you still have the upgraded hard drive with all the mods and such on there and all your games and emulators and everything, but you can't access them because you're going into a stock environment to play online. But since OG Xbox Live has been dead for so long, it really doesn't matter anymore. So that's also why I'm just, you know, reflashing this. Because I want every mode to be usable. Let's go ahead, take this out as well. There we go. All right. And let me also, I'm just going to move these drives over here. Those should be okay. And now looking at all of this, I'm just trying to see going about the easiest way of taking this all out here. So this is the X3 chip. We can pop that out like so, blad out. There's stuff hooked up to the bottom of the board. This is hooked up to the eject board. This is all hooked up to the front panel here. 
So everything seems to be okay from what I'm observing on that. But uh, to do the T-SOP here, let's see. I know since it's a 1.0 board, we're gonna have to solder on top and we're gonna have to solder on the bottom. I wanna see if we can just solder on the top because I'll be honest with y'all, I don't, I don't really feel like, <laughs> Yeah, I, I'll be completely honest with you all. I don't really feel like took, taking out this whole board if I can avoid it. So let, let me look that up real quick. And I'm looking here. So first of all, I do have a Hynix. I believe that's how you say it. Uh, Hynix T-SOP. So I don't need to do anything crazy since it's not a sharp or a wind bond. Uh, and I actually looked up the alternative T-SOP points on here. And unfortunately, so I can do the two on top. But for the ones on bottom, well, let's see. I guess I can technically solder to one of the legs on the T-SOP, but I really don't want to, so. Yeah, we're just gonna take the whole thing apart, which is fine, it's fine. Um, I was trying to see if I could avoid that, which I still technically can, but whatever, we'll, we'll do it the proper way first of all, so let's go ahead and tear this whole thing down. Alright, so now that we've removed everything here, let's go ahead and get to doing the two T-SOP points that we need to. So there's a point here, I don't remember exactly where it is, but it's going to be, actually I think it's that R7, R3, or R7, R4, depending on where you're looking. Uh, let me look that up real quick. See up on the bottom here, it is going to be R7, R3 first of all. So let me grab my soldering iron here and my solder, and I'm going to turn this thing on, and let's just wait for this to heat up. So it looks like the bottom two points there are done, which is awesome. So now let's go to the R7D3 on the top of the board. And it's really just going to be the same story here, getting these two points. And there we go. So thankfully, once you get the board stripped down everything, this is like a one or two minute procedure at most. So I've cleaned off my soldering iron at that point. I'm going to turn it off because we don't need it anymore. And I think, I think we're good, thankfully. So let me just double check my work there. And I'm just, I'm eyeballing it here. But yeah, R7D3 looks fine. Looking at the bottom, where was that, where was that? There we go. And those two look fine. And I'll just clean these points up for extra measure. And then I think we'll be good to begin the reassembly process. For this I always use my trusty 99% isopropyl alcohol. I'm still on my first bottle after all these years. Just have to clean that there. There we go. Some people might also notice that I didn't clean the board before doing this. I knew that it was pretty clean for the most part, and honestly, if I was having difficulty with this, I would have cleaned it, but I really didn't have any difficulty getting these points here, so that's all we need. Cool. That's it. So, those have all been cleaned up. Let's get to partial reassembly, at least. Alright, so we got it pieced back in here. I'm going to begin screwing this in. And one thing I, I've thought of doing, like, as I was putting this back in, I thought to myself, I'm just going to try and get into the habit of whenever I have these 1.0 through 1.5 boards apart, uh, if I'm like cleaning them, what have you, because I, I have a few systems and normally I'll 
eventually mod them, might do some different mods or whatever, depending on, you know, what I'm doing on the channel here and such. But I'm just really going to try to get into the habit of whenever I have any of these earlier non 1.6 boards opened up, just soldering the two points in there because it's incredibly easy to do. And I think the only one, I believe the only one which you have to undo some of your work is the sharp T-SOPs because all the others like Hitachi, Hynex and all of them, you just do the points and you're done. With wind bond, you have to do that one a little bit differently. I think the flashing procedure, I've only done one wind bond ever. And from what I remember, the physical install was not difficult at all. It was about the same, but the installation, the flashing procedure was a little bit different. But I think the only one you have to do a little differently in terms of installation is sharp. Cause there's like one wire you have to attach between two points and it's highly recommended to remove that wire once you're done flashing the t-sop on there but for everything else really what i'm saying here is i can go into a stock system keep it stock for the rest of its life and if i just hit the t-sop points on the top and bottom of the board it's not going to affect the system positively or negatively and there's going to be no change in end user experience the only time it ever changes is when you explicitly decide to soft mod your console and run a recovery disk and then purposefully try to flash the TSOP. It, and at that point, it just, it allows you to do it. So that's really the only way it's going to change on there. So I, I'm just going to try and get more into the habit of whenever I have these older systems open, just doing that. The only ones I don't TSOP for the most part are 1.6 systems because, I mean, obviously 1.6 systems, you cannot TSOP flash. The only way you can hard mod them is by actually using a mod chip. So I have all those screws in here. Let's go ahead, get this all back in working order. So here we go, that is the executor eject board, which is going to go right there. Uh, let me go ahead, of course, hook up the fan. That's going to be required. We're going to need some power, so having the power supply hooked in. We'll also do a little bit of good to the system. There we go. And here, about the last thing we really need to wire up is going to be this guy. So let me just find the two points. This is going to be one of them. Here's the other, the three pin. Yep. And then right around here, I just need to go in, literally pop this on, and that's it. So the mod chip at this point has been successfully reinstalled. And when I'm doing this, let me see, I'm just thinking of the best way to do this here. I'm thinking the best way would probably be to go in, use this hard drive, keep the keep the chip here disabled, and just uh, essentially soft mod the system, I guess. I don't know. I haven't done this. I haven't done a TSOP after doing a hard mod. I should have for the video. I just did it all straight away because I wanted to do like a back in the day install, but now to actually keep this going and keep it in my collection, um, <laughs> we'll, we'll see what's up. I guess the other way alternatively too is I could just remove the mod chip and ensure that that's all going to be okay. So you know what, that's actually what we might do. So what I'm gonna do for this is I'm gonna do something a little bit differently. I'm going to here. Just to make sure this all remains safe. And let me, you know, here we go. That's what I should do. Just going to remove that, remove that, remove that, there we go. And I just want to swap out the eject board. So I'm going to temporarily undo this and let's reinstall it back in. So now at this point, we do not have the eject board for the X3. The X3 is not going to be hooked up. So I'm going to keep the chip on the side for now. So that way, this system has no way of loading an outside BIOS. It physically cannot load anything from here. Uh, these cables are not going to do anything. They're just going to sit in here. These cables aren't gonna do anything either. And then the eject board has been removed. So there's not even really, actually I'm even thinking on that. I really need, nah, maybe. 
Hmm. Oh, well, we'll just take that out. I, I was just kind of thinking to myself, we might not have even had to remove that, but, you know, too late. It's all good. So, let me just get it back to a working order here. Let me just grab the caddy here. Grab the original stock hard drive. And we'll just kind of wire in like so. And again, at this point, because I'm kind of just getting everything into a temporary like edge test state, so to speak. I don't care for anything looking pretty right now. So let's go ahead, hook up the hard drive again. Again, this is the stock locked hard drive. And there we go. So now at this point, uh, I believe the reason why I had the uh, additional files on here, I think, I think, I want to say, I think I did a hard mod install on this, just on this drive, and then, you know, I upgraded the hard drive to the 250 gig and set that all up. Uh, so, I might just have to boot this into stock, and actually, we'll, we'll see our options here. Let me see if I can boot up any alternative way. Because if we could, awesome. If not, it's all good. But let's give this a shot. All right, so first of all, I'm just gonna boot this up from the power button. Make sure it works. And there's really about only two ways we can do this. So first of all, of course, power button and clock capacitor. Of course, since that has been removed, it doesn't remember the time. So just grab this, pop it in here. All right, let me check my memory real quick. Uh, I don't have all too much on here, so... Cool. I think I might have used this for my SID video. I don't remember on this one. But let's see, I'm just gonna go in and delete all these here and just kind of start fresh. And I'm gonna keep these... Well, the unknown titles aren't gonna do anything. But let's see. So... I'm just going to assume that will all be well and good. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to go and delete these again. Cool. Uh, I could have gone back into memory there, that would have been okay. Now I do have a flash drive I've already prepared with the soft mod files I need. So this is using the Rocky 5 soft mod. So I'm going to pop this in. No, not that. Go to the controller. And I'm just going to copy all these over. Cool. So all that's done. So I'm going to remove that. And now at this point, and the reason why some people might be asking why I'm going about it this way, is because I don't, right now, I don't know of a way I can boot up into a modified dashboard um, that will allow me to play copied games and all that stuff and flash the TSOP. If I want to get to that point, as is right now with the other drive, I would be on one of the BIOS banks on the chip here, and I don't want to reflash anything on this. I want to reflash the TSOP. So with that, I'm just going in, again, reverted this to stock, I'm going to soft mod the system, and then I'm going to TSOP flash it. So let me grab my copy of Splinter Cell, which I thankfully have a disc right here. I literally just did a episode of Thrifty Gaming Pickups, uh, a series on my second channel, and here I have a Platinum Hits copy of Splinter Cell. So I'm going to use this to also prove that it does work on here. I know it's been documented that this works, but just, again, proving it. But yeah, I just ended up doing a video on there where I end up getting this triple pack, and it's sitting right next to me because I still haven't cleaned up from it. So let's go ahead, fire this up, and continue with the soft mod. All right, so you already know, you've done this before. Start game, Linux, A. <laughs> and let's just wait for this to finish up now. So my, uh, my LED has turned red on the system. There we go, all right, so press the A button. And Rocky is going to do most of the rest of the work for us. Thank you so much for that, Rocky. So uh, let me grab one of my discs while this is running. 
so that's it. That took about five minutes, and I pressed a few buttons and took out the disc. Like, it's really pressing the A button three or four times and removing the disc when prompted. So now, I'm going to take my copy of Hexen, literally a copy that I've copied, pop it in, this is Hexen 2018, and now this will allow me on a soft modded, since the system is soft modded, this will now allow me to run a burned disc, which is what I was trying to do. All right, Hexen 2018 is in the tray, so let's fire it up. Now, the fun thing about Hexen is I, I don't really know why, but I'm not sure if anyone's explained it to me yet or not, um, but this thing takes like a minute to boot up. I'm not sure why. So your LED will change to red on the Xbox, and then you kind of just have to sit here while your disk drive makes a little ticking noises and all that stuff. And after about a minute, it boots up. So let's just wait for that. All right, so there we go. We are now in Hexen. So what I need to do for this is go to TSOP Flash Shift Xbox Tools, Mod Chip TSOP Flash. Yes. And let's wait. All right, so since I have a 1.0 model system, that means I have a one megabyte TSOP, so I can flash anything from a 256K, like any of these options right here, to a one megabyte. So we don't have any one megabyte BIOS, unfortunately, on here, so I'm just going to go to 512. I do want to use F and G, and I'll just go with the X2 5035. That normally treats me pretty well. So there we go. Press Y, and it's racing. It's no going back now at this point. <laughs> and it does also show I have the Hynix right here, so that is accurate as to what we saw on the board itself. And it should begin flashing here soon. There we go, flashing. That's all done, the Xbox is going to turn off. What I'm going to do now is physically remove the disc. So I'm gonna hit the eject button to boot this up. And you should also notice a little bit of a difference in the boot up sequence here. So there we go, immediately X2 config live loading different animation and right there it should say executor rocks my box but check it out I do not have the mod chip because the mod chip is sitting right here so awesome this time way we were able to get into my custom dashboard that I had installed on here previously so I'm gonna turn this off so now at this point we can reinstall the mod chip and get all the functionality that we need on here so Let's go ahead and go about the rest of that. Oh, and one thing I actually want to do while we're here, let's fire this up again. And I'm actually going to go in and unlock this hard drive because I do not need it to be locked anymore. So I only need it to be locked to boot into the retail BIOS, but because this system no longer has a retail BIOS, uh, we can go in and unlock it which you can do pretty easily from Unleash X. And this is something, it warns you, but I'm just gonna tell you all, if anybody's watching this, do not do this. Just do not do this at all. If you have a, uh, this step here I'm gonna show you. Do not do this if you have a soft modded system. Storage, status, unlock, there we go. So the drive is no longer locked. So I'm going to now shut it down. And let's get to the reinstallation process. All right, so unplug the controller. We'll just put this down here for now. Unplug the power. Unplug this. That is another successful TSOP flash. Thankfully, I'm very happy about that. So I'm actually, well, for now, I do need to remove this. There we go. Take that all off. Alright, so for this here, thankfully, again, this should be pretty easy to reinstall. So for putting the chip back in, I just need to line this up properly. Looks like all the points are up at the top, so plug that in with no issues. So that is now our control panel, or not control panel, but our control switch on the front. Uh, I need to change this up, so let me reinstall the eject board by putting this in, uh, if I can, there we go, that's been reinstalled, eject board now goes right there, 
something like that. That's about where it should go. This is going to hook into the mod chip itself. So that's to send the eject signals, everything that's needed, the power and eject button signals to the mod chip. This is going to be for the D0 and the two LEDs for LAN and hard drive activity. And it looks like we have everything hooked up, so now, just pop that on and that's it. Thankfully the mod chip is now easily reassembled and everything is wired back in as to where it should be. Even, yeah, I can throw that in like so. We're good. Yeah, I would say we're good at that point. So, now, let's go ahead and grab the DVD drive, put it back in, and work backwards. All right, so I have everything except for the top put back on here, but this should be working, so I'm actually going to move the camera and show you all exactly what I was trying to get as the end result here. All right, so even Lily had to come out here for the final step here, but I'm gonna show you all what this is looking like in the end, and this is exactly what I wanted as the final result. So, coming right over. This is the Xbox. Of course, it is not 100% complete because it is sitting here topless, which I will install the top of the case on here once this video is all done. Uh, but we have this all hooked up, looking just fine. And, uh, you know, I'm going to turn this off as well. There we go. So we don't have the stark contrast. Uh, but check this out. So this is how it looks like if we just turned on normally with banks 1 through 8 selected. As you can see, the mod chip has been enabled. We do have the custom boot up right there. And if we wait a few seconds, it should take us to X3 Config Live, which is only accessible from the X3 itself. So this is all from the mod chip. There we go. So build 3294. I'm going to turn that off. Here's the second BIOS I have flashed on. So if we turn on banks five through eight, boot up normally, we have the exact same type of setup right here. Again, from the mod chip, custom boot up, all that fun stuff. And wait a few moments. And there we go, X3 build 1957. Turn this off, I'll show you all flash bios if I can. This is really tricky to get into, I've noticed, but you have to press both these buttons at the same time. Oh, there we go, I got it, it turned purple. Flash BIOS comes up right there. That's from the backup bank. And now, finally, thing almost bit me. <laughs> Turn that off. Now the last thing is booting it up with the mod chip disabled. So you have to hold down the power button right here. That turns red. X2 config live loading, check that out. So I have to wait a few seconds because it spins up the hard drive, has to load the config file off there. And we have a different boot up screen on here. Still executor, but then there we go. After a few seconds, it should load up Unleash X. And perfect, we got Unleash X. And this right now is completely separate of the X3 itself. This is on the console itself. This is this has nothing to do with the mod chip at this point. So that's about it. That is exactly what I wanted. On the mod chip itself, we have two X3 BIOS and we also have flash BIOS. And then on the console itself, we have a custom X2 BIOS. And that means that all four methods of booting up this chip right now that I have uh, is is working just fine. I can right now on this system have up to 10 different BIOS. I could essentially load this chip up right here with eight different 256K BIOS. Uh, of course, Flash BIOS is gonna be on there too, so I'll include that as number nine. And then also flash a BIOS onto the console itself. So this console itself can boot into up to 10 BIOS right now if I want it to. But right now it's booting up to four different ones because again, I include flash bios on that but yeah that is it so at this point the nice thing is 
if I ever want to. That just that was kind of a little pet peeve of mine. At this point now, if I ever want to boot this up, the red X will show up there, meaning the mod chip has been disabled. But guess what? The system is still technically hard modded because it has been TSOP flashed, and I'm able to run everything just fine, and I don't have to worry about relocking my drive. At this point in 2019, there's no reason to relock your drive unless you're sticking to a soft mod. Um, and even then, I normally recommend if you're a little bit comfortable with soldering, try to do a TSOP flash as opposed to a soft mod. I just think TSOP flashes and hard mods are always going to be better than soft mods on that. Uh, really, with soft mods, you still use the retail BIOS. The retail BIOS requires you to have your hard drive locked, and that can be just a little bit of a mess on its own sometime. Mainly if you're having trouble locking the drive or you have a drive that just does not lock. But now at this point, no matter what we boot into, it does not matter, and that's exactly what I was looking for. So we're good on all that. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, a like would absolutely be appreciated. If you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well, too. If you dislike it, I mean, that's totally fine, as I said. But just remember, if you do dislike it, you're going to make this dog here very, very sad.